Has this ever happened to you? What the hell? Alright, guess it's time to sell it. Well, don't sell that car just yet because today on the spin cycle, I'm going to show you how to fix it. Yet another one of the FC's little foibles are the power window switches that have a nasty habit of failing. This is due to the fact that they carry all of the current directly to the power window motor at the regulator. As a result, anytime you actuate the switch to make the window go up or down, you get a little electrical arc that causes corrosion buildup over time. Now you may have noticed that your window works intermittently, it's gotten slower and slower, or it's just inevitably failed altogether. So today, we're going to take the switch out of the driver's side door panel and take it apart. I'm going to show you how to clean that corrosion off to get the switch up and running again. Tools that you're going to need to do this are very basic. You're only going to need a couple of screwdrivers, some dielectric grease, and a pencil eraser. So let's go ahead and take the switch out of the door and get started on disassembling it. Now getting the switch out of the door panel is very easy. All you need to do is take a flat blade screwdriver or something similar and pry up on the back of the window switch right there. Now, as with everything else in these cars, they are extremely fragile. And once I take mine out, and you can see how it's held into the door panel, you'll have a better understanding of how you need to pry yours in order to get it out without breaking it. So as you can see, there are only these little metal feet on either side of the switch that hold it into the recess of the armrest on the door panel. There's no screws or anything that hold it down, so as long as you can lever on the back side of the switch here, that'll allow the feet to release and the switch to come out. Go ahead and unplug it from the door harness, and then we'll go ahead and take this over to my toolbox and I'll show you how to disassemble it. So with the switch out of the car, we can turn it over and take a look at what we're going to have to remove in order to get the switch apart. There's three Phillips head screws on the back side here. So there's one on each side of the switch where the, uh, the feet are that hold the feet to the switch and the switch base to the outer trim. And there's one in the middle there that needs to come off. And then this whole switch will just basically blow apart in our hands. So let's go ahead and take a small Phillips head bit on our screwdriver here and get those taken out. Now you see I kind of braced the base of the switch as I took that last screw out because I don't want the whole switch to just fall apart in my hands because at that point you might lose the little contacts inside. I mean, I've got a nice blank work surface here and nothing's going to go flying, but if you're not doing this over any sort of work surface, then those contacts can fall on the floor. You could step on them and flatten them out. We don't want that to happen. So turn the switch back over and very carefully pull that off. Obviously the, uh, the cutout for the passenger side switch, the little foot <clears throat> just fell out of the top of the switch there and there's a little spring down in there. That's something else you don't want to lose. So we'll set that aside. So with the switch apart, you can now see kind of how it works. You've got four of these little rocker contacts here. Now they are coated in a copper uh, that you don't want to remove, but we'll get to that later. The other important thing is that you note that these have a specific shape to them. You don't want to do anything to change the shape of these rocker contacts because if you do that, you're going to affect how the switch works, if it even works at all, depending on how out of shape you get them. So we can go ahead and take all these contacts out. They are keyed, so they only kind of go in one way. Um, so we're going to go ahead and lay these aside. That'll make it easier to show you the problem here with these switches. With the contacts now out of it, you can see the base contact pads here, which I don't know if it's going to come across in the camera very well but they are looking a little bit black. This switch still works. Um, it doesn't work brilliantly and it doesn't work all of the time, especially on the driver's side window. So that's one of the reasons I'm taking this apart now is to correct that. Now, as I said, these contact pads as well as the, the, uh, the rocker contacts are covered in a uh, copper coating. And if you rub that off, then the metals, the base metals that they're made out of will actually corrode even faster. So that's why you use a pencil eraser to get all this, this black corrosion off. 
Now, over time, if you are uh, cleaning these switches often uh, and you don't use dielectric grease, which is why you'd be continuing to clean them, uh, you will rub that copper off. So this switch has seen quite a bit of action by the looks of it, but once we clean it up and give it another little coat of dielectric grease, it should continue to function uh, and be perfectly serviceable for quite some time. So let's go ahead and grab a pencil eraser and start cleaning some of these up. So now that we've uh, gone at it for a little while with the eraser and a little bit of glass cleaner, uh, you can see that the contacts are a lot shinier and cleaner than they were before. Uh, ditto with the little guys here. All you need to worry about is the, uh, the underside of the contact. You don't need to worry about the top. Uh, now that that's done, we're going to put just a little smidgen of dielectric grease on each of these contact points to help prevent the corrosion from happening nearly as quickly so that this fix lasts for as long as it can. So I'm just going to take some on my finger. You really you don't want to go crazy with this because there is such a thing as too much dielectric grease. And just give it the smallest little film over each contact point. just to help reduce or eliminate the arcing every time you operate the switch. You don't need to worry about the underside of the, uh, the rocker contacts because there's already some on the pads here and uh, it's, you know, as I said, there's, there is such a thing as too much dielectric grease. Try to get it down in there for the power cut off for the passenger switch. Alrighty. As I stated earlier in the video, these rocker contacts are keyed. You have these little tabs that come off the side of them. Let me get that closer for you all. And one side is larger than the other and they, they correspond with the, uh, the cutouts here in the switch. So they do only go one way. So it's just a matter of reinserting those guys, keep the uh, switch base level, otherwise they will just fall right out. Go ahead and stick them all back in where they go. We've got a little piece of paper towel up in there. And last one. Cool, now we can put the switch back together and put the screws back in with the little feet. And once that's done, the switch is ready to go back into the car. Switch feels good. You hear distinct clicks anytime you uh, actuate it, and that the rocker switch is indeed still a rocker switch and not just stuck on one side there. So let's go ahead and toss this back in the car, and we should have working windows again. So now that you've cleaned your power window switch, once again, you should have windows that perform beautifully. In fairness, however, I am going to say that left to its own devices, this problem is going to crop up again eventually. And this is due to the design, the power window switch and circuit, carrying all that current through the switch, through those contacts to get to the power window motor. Now there is a permanent fix for this out there. 
you do your research, it's called the Power Window Relay Mod. And this is a procedure in which you install relays into both doors uh, so that the switch is only activating a relay which is designed to carry, you know, 30, 40 amps to send power to the window motor. And that is a fix that is going to last many, many years. You probably won't even own the car past that point. You'll also notice that if you do this mod, your windows will roll up and down a whole lot faster because you'll be getting nice, clean voltage and current going to the window motor. So if you really want to never have to do this again, I would highly recommend you do your research into that mod and go ahead and perform that modification to your car. But you know, as I said, you're going to get a couple of years out of this one fix. Also, I am going to be doing a video in which I show you how to install a Mazda MPV power window switch into a second gen RX-7 for a few reasons. Uh, one is that these MPVs are everywhere in salvage yards. The window switches are very inexpensive, they are very sturdy, and they fit physically right into the door panels of the second gen with no problem whatsoever. You just need to do a little bit of repinning to make the switch work. Um, alternatively, the switches in the MPV don't seem to suffer quite as badly from the uh, arcing problem like the second gen switches do. And I mean, who knows, you might like the look of the MPV switches better than you like the look of the RX-7 switches. So that is going to do it for today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it for you and that you learned something that you can apply to your own car. Additional information will be posted in the description box below. Please like or dislike the video and give me some feedback as to why either way. If you're new, consider subscribing. But until next time, guys, take care.